tune in for Patrick Ching's painting in paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn to paint Hawaii's mountains. We'll learn the anatomy of mountains and see how painting distant mountains can create miles of distance on a flat surface. I'll show you how to draw mountains that get farther and farther away, and then how to paint them step by step. But first, I'd like to share the art of some of my favorite mountain painters. When we return, we'll learn about Hawaii's mountains from University of Hawaii geology professor, Dr. Scott Rowland. All this and more on this monumental episode of... Painting in Paradise! <laughs> Hawaii's monk seals and green sea turtles have been around for millions of years. When their numbers got low, they became protected by law. These animals are returning to beaches they've not come to for hundreds of years. This causes excitement and sometimes conflict. Honwen Hina is a children's book that was painted with aloha by many artists of all ages. This story of coexistence answers some questions about the history of these animals, but more importantly, about their future. Available at the Kilauea Lighthouse, Patrick Ching Art in the Princeville Center, or online at patrickchingart.com. Some of the most prominent things to paint in Hawaii are mountains. Yet they may be difficult to depict, even for experienced painters. The Hawaiian Islands were formed by volcanoes that erupted out of the sea. Some of these volcanoes are still erupting today and are among the largest volcanic mountains in the world. The Hawaiian word for these large mountains is Mauna, as in Mauna Kea, or White Mountain, and Mauna Loa, or Long Mountain. Learning how mountains were formed and what they're made of will help us to understand what we're really looking at. All our mountains start out as volcanoes on the floor of the ocean and they grow upwards and the ocean's pretty deep so they have to be 15,000 feet tall before they ever even make it above sea level. And once they make it above sea level, then they continue to grow but they're also at that point susceptible to erosion 
by waves and streams and rainfall um, and landslides. But eventually Hawaiian volcanoes die off. And at that point, erosion becomes the dominant geological force that's sculpting the, the landscape. Uh, waves can really go to work on coastlines, and all of those processes caused volcanoes to become steeper and to change their color a little bit and to become covered with vegetation. I asked Dr. Rowland about the different colors of dirt in Hawaii. Hawaiian lava flows have iron in them, and when they're fresh, that, that iron is unoxidized, and so that's why it has a dark gray to almost black color but it doesn't take much reaction with oxygen to cause the iron to oxidize, just like rust, just like metal rusts. And as that iron in the lava flows oxidizes, it starts to turn red or orange or even yellow. So there are all kinds of combinations of, of blacks and reds and yellows and oranges to, to give you, you know, quite a palette of natural colors in Hawaiian soils. Some Hawaiian hillsides are made of tough material. Craters such as Diamond Head, Cocoa Head, and Cocoa Crater on Oahu are all made of tuff. Rabbit Island is also a tuff cone, and its Hawaiian name Manana means floating or buoyant. Basically, tuff is volcanic material that was originally fragments, like volcanic ash or cinders or something like that, that has been naturally cemented into rock. Any place where, when the eruptions took place, there was explosive interaction between the erupting magma and water of some kind. As the islands were being formed, some of the lava never made it to the outside of the volcanoes. These areas of molten lava were much more solid because they were never mixed with the open air. And dikes are these blade-shaped bodies of basaltic magma, or basaltic rock, that were once the feeder systems of eruptions. And once an eruption is po, the, the rock that's in that fracture stays there and it solidifies underground. Many times the dike rock is more resistant to erosion than the lava flows and you end up with sometimes very prominent ridges that are there because there's a lot of dike rock in those ridges. So now that we know a little bit about how mountains were formed and how they erode, let's talk a bit about what grows on the mountains. You can have lush vegetation, dry vegetation, lichens, huh? Lichens. There are light colored lichens that give the rock almost white color. There are dark lichens that are very, very dark black. Yep. White lichens growing on dark mountains can be tricky for painters. Not only do you have to show what's in the light and what's in the shadow, you have to show what's light and dark in the sun and what's light and dark in the shadows. What's happening in the sky is also going to affect the look of your mountains. Do you notice how your mountains look when the sky is blue? How about when the sky is orange? And what happens when it's cloudy? And when it rains? Hazy sky? One of my favorite kinds of mountain is the far away mountain. I especially love them on a clear moist day in the morning. That's because moisture gathers on the earth at night, and in the morning, as the sun warms it, tiny little water droplets rise into the sky. These tiny little water particles are microscopic, but they reflect the color of their surroundings, and in this case, it's the bluish purple color of the sky. So, the farther away a mountain is, the more of the sky color is in it. And by using faraway mountains in your art, you can create miles of distance on a flat surface. When we return, I'll show you how to draw distant mountains. Hey friends, it's me, Patrick Ching, and I'm here to introduce you to the Papahana Mokuakea Song and Color Book Project. All you gotta do is just go to uh, www.papahanaomokuakeasong.com And here, I'm gonna do it right here. See, it's on the computer. And then when the website comes up, it might start playing some music, and if not, you just press this little button right there, and bing, Magic! That's Kavika Kahiapo, and he's telling us about this song. You can even 
can download the coloring book pages and the ukulele chords. Hmm. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Scroll down and get the free coloring book pages. Right there, you can download the coloring book pages, print them out, and color them. See the Now this downloads better with a laptop computer rather than a um, handheld device. Kavika Kaviyapu. So if you want to learn a lot and have fun doing it, download, print, and color the pages at papahanaomokuakeasong.com papahanaomokuakeasong.com As artists, we are also illusionists. Having mountains in our drawing is one way we can present the illusion of distant space on our flat piece of paper. All right, friends, so now I'm gonna show you how I go about drawing far away mountains. I'm gonna create a lot of distance on a flat piece of paper using a pencil and paper, you know, your dark and your light. And this kind of forces you to pay attention to dark and light and really use your dark and light mind, yeah? Uh -huh. So what I'm going to do is create mountains that go farther and farther away. And I'm just going to give them a little outline like that. I'm just going to make up mountains. I'm kind of making up mountains like the Napali coast here. That go farther and farther away. I'll put a little horizon line like the ocean and... So now you see that I got a series of mountains going into the distance and I'm just going to use my pencil and start shading them, okay? It's a nice dark pencil. Okay, so the ones that are closer to me are going to have the darkest darks and they're going to get lighter and lighter as they go off into the distance. Notice also that at the top of each ridge line, I'm gonna make it even a little darker. Okay, and with every mountain that gets farther away, I'll start again, making it a little darker towards the edge. And a little lighter as it gets closer to the other mountain, okay? With every mountain that gets farther away, they're also getting a little lighter overall. Okay, so now I got my basic mountains over here. I've also got a little bit of sky. And I've got a horizon line horizon of the ocean, okay? Be aware also of that curve in your hand, okay? Sometimes to fight the curve of my hand, I'll turn my paper around or my painting. Okay, all to use the curve of your hand in its smartest way. All right. I'm gonna take this drawing and I'm gonna to continue to shade it. And you'll see that I'll be getting darker darks and brighter brights as I get closer. And the far away mountains will have more of a tone that gets lighter and lighter in value as it goes farther away.
So as you can see, what I'm trying to do here is to get the darkest darks and the brightest brights up front and fade them off gently as they get into the distance. Now this forces you to pay attention to darks and lights and values. Okay, values is the degree of darkness that you're putting down. Now you could even try and draw something in the foreground there that's even real dark and bright. But you see what we're doing by creating distance on a flat surface. When we return, I'm gonna take this concept and recreate it with paint. For today's lesson, we'll learn how to paint distant mountains. We'll see what happens to mountains as they get farther away. Uh, for the beginning of this painting, I'm gonna make quick work of a sky. I'm just gonna get my light sky and dark sky colors like we've mixed a number of times. I'll go ahead with my crosshatch pattern. All right, so what we're after is a gradual fade from a light sky to a dark sky. I like my skies to look very flat, so I'm gonna knock down the brush strokes by vertical strokes, coming back down, hardly touching the canvas. And this just knocks down the paint strokes, always finishing with my side to side. Okay, so this color I'm putting down represents the dark color of the mountains. And as it gets closer to us, I'm gonna add more of a blackish color to it. All right, and the last thing for an underpainting is I'll do the ocean. I tell you what, I'll use a little bit of an aqua green color towards the coastline. And then coming in with some deep dark blue. Okay, and just that quickly, we've put one layer of paint. And I'll take a little bit of white paint and I'll come up with some wispy clouds here. Okay, serious clouds. Oh man, you can just have a little party in there. So I'm gonna get in here and paint my mountains all again. Okay. I'm just taking that upper sky color again. All right. And we might make them even darker towards the edge so it separates one mountain from the other, okay? These faraway mountains, I just love them. The purple colors in them, you know? So you're using purples, blues, blacks. Really figuring, get to know that color well, okay? That color is your friend. Boom, right there. Okay, so as we get closer, I might get a little more color in there. In my green, I'm gonna take that aqua green and my sky color. You know, I might be getting things a little greener as we get closer. Okay, so right now we're trying to also tell the viewer where the light's coming from. Okay, I got patches of earth or dirt. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Okay, I'm starting to add little whites and yellows up. Oh, that's a little, maybe a little too much right there. Maybe not, we'll try it. All right. I will step away from the painting right there and start working on this closest mountain here is going to be where we have the darkest darks and lightest lights. So I'm starting to put a thin coat of some very dark green that's almost kind of black. So you see me just kind of bouncing around building my mountain letting my viewers know uh, what's getting hit by light and what is not. Okay, I wanna encourage you not to make everything all evenly light and dark. Have 
have patches of light and patches of dark available. All right. Okay, and anything can happen in here. You can start getting some yellow ochre, some different colors. Maybe have some uh, whites in your yellows. I'm gonna put some white and aqua green down here. Just make it a little interesting. A little bit of some hazy action going on. I'm all for mist and haze. I'm pretty darn happy there, my far away mountains. All right. Well, let's recap, okay? We started off our underpainting. I, I did a sky and basically one layer of, of sky gradation and another layer of clouds. I put a base coat on the mountains and the ocean. Um, then I went and started using the upper sky color for my farthest mountain. Remember, the farther the mountains go, they take on the color of the sky, especially in the dark areas. The darks become more like the dark color of the sky. As they get closer, they might get darker and darker, and the brights get brighter and brighter. So I hope you had a good time, and I hope you understand how mountains look when they get farther away, and how to rebuild them with paint. Aloha. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Hawaii's mountains and how to draw and paint them. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send me a picture of you and your art to aloha at patrickching.com. Bye-bye. <laughs>